scary stuff. No, I'm kidding. Haha, uh -huh. just kidding. There's nothing scary about databases. And in fact, that's exactly what this series is about. We're going to demystify your database. We're going to show you just how simple, logical, and easy to use it is. Open the door, step into the database world, let's talk databases. Good morning, database universe hitchhikers. Broadcasting from the 31st parallel, we bring to you today a topic of the scientific approach to database performance analysis. Database performance analysis is, and performance analysis in general is probably one of the oldest uh, problems in computing since we've had um, any old piece of hardware that was somehow uh, powered by some piece of code that was written on punch cards. Ever since those days, uh, we've had to tweak it and tune it just because nothing that comes out from under a human hand is ever going to be perfect the first time around. What are you going to do? We're all human. <clears throat> but we have to deal with this uh, somehow or another. And um, there are various uh, methods of dealing with it. Let's say uh, what we're going to uh, concentrate on is the business approach. Because uh, it's one thing to talk about performance in academia when uh, you want to squeeze out every last uh, piece of performance just so that you can say that you've accomplished some uh, scientific achievement. It's another thing when you're trying to run a business. You want to have a good enough uh, performance that is going to power the business and is going to be cost effective. And to that end, uh, I want to take an issue with one of the most popular troubleshooting techniques uh, that we see in data centers, which is the let's just try this approach, right? Uh, it's uh, nice. It doesn't require a lot of thinking and it takes a lot of uh, QA time, a lot of systems time and you can have 20 people sitting on this, let's just try this and banging their head against the wall and billing lots of hours. Cute, right? No. Uh, we don't want that. We want a scientific approach to problem solving because that's what the scientific approach is for. What you have a uh, essentially a, a lot of data that is more or less unorganized and you're going to try to somehow discern patterns out of this and you try to gonna, uh, gonna try to figure out what exactly went wrong and how are you going to fix it so first and foremost you need to stick to the facts that is one of the uh, foundations of the scientific method don't make any assumptions. Don't come to me saying, oh, it must be, it must be last week this store procedure was causing problems. So it must be that. Oh, it must be the release that we did last month. You don't know. Just first look at the facts. That's a very basic, very simple scientific approach. But you know what? It requires discipline. It's understandable that some people want to jump to conclusions. They may feel pressure. They may have a CEO, CFO, CXO standing over their heads demanding answers and they don't know the answer. You have to have the guts to say, I don't know. I'm going to look at the facts. I'm going to find out very fast and I'm going to get back to you. But right now, I don't know. And if you have the guts to say that, you are almost a scientist. Next, in order to really, really be deserving of that white lab coat and maybe even a hat, then uh, you can, uh, you need to look for patterns because there are patterns in what we're doing. You can argue until your horse whether or not the science uh, in, in terms of life sciences can discern patterns if there are patterns at all. But here in computing, we're all about patterns. After all, we have hardware that is working with firmware and some software. You may argue about how quality this is, how, not it, uh, how, how good, how bad, but at the end of the day, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros being propelled through the, the electronic circuits by some sort of a logical system that was meant to execute logical instructions one at a time, period. 
There's got to be a pattern there. There's no, there are no UFOs in data centers. There are no gremlins. How many times you've heard people looking for gremlins in data centers? They're not there. Only zeros and ones, electrons, and you can definitely find a pattern there. You, you have to find a pattern, and not only that, you have to be able to make a prediction. Because one, and, and very important, your prediction has to make sense. Now, I, I know this, sound, this sounds trivial, but really isn't. How many times have I heard people come up with all sorts of outlandish theories? Where do you come up with this from? Does, it, does your theory fit the facts? Not always. And this is where we separate men from boys. We're going to have to make sure that we stick to the facts at all times, at all costs, including in our theory. It's fine to have an edge case, maybe two, but to have 30% of data, an edge case, that's already a little too much. And you have to be con conscious of that. And then last, but definitely not least, iterate until satisfied. What I mean by that, don't get attached to your theories. Everyone's human. You're not divine. You don't have perfect knowledge of anything and it's fine there's no reason to have a god complex like some doctors have uh, you know it's even like uh, classified in a dsm uh, uh, book of uh, the psychological disorders they think that they're the invincible or they're, they're they're somehow perfect we don't need to have these kind of problems we keep it real stay cool stay calm and logical whatever it is that we conclude, it should be a logical conclusion. And if the logic doesn't fit the facts, we change the logic. We change our theory. We say, okay, this fit our number, uh, numbers up until this point, and then it didn't. So let's go back to the observation stage and see what it is that we missed. What kind of pattern uh, may be missing? Yeah. Of course, you need to have a fundamental understanding of how computational systems work in order to do this correctly and fast so that you can iterate through theories at light speed so that you can come to a finish line with a real con valuable conclusion faster than some guy that's guessing. Uh, but it's worth it because when you come with that conclusion, that conclusion is worth its weight in gold and you can take that to the bank.